Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Gonna do just a few little things here. Gonna make a dupe. And dummy. Just something for Shiites and Grins. Alright, so whenever setting up deaths and health and the like, few little things to take into account. Um, we'll, we'll ease into it. Just going to have a little bit of fun right now. So, I'm going to do event, begin play. And this is just to play around with something really quickly. And we're going to run a delay. Let's give it about five seconds. Then I think what we're going to do is grab the mesh. And if you notice, um, physics, simulate physics. So set simulate physics. And we'll just do that. And we'll see what happens. And grab our dummy. Play a new pie is fine. All right, so five seconds after launch. Ball to the world. No bueno. It's interesting the um the fact that it just falls to the world. Just wanted to see what would happen of just turning it on just at random. But let's do something a little bit different here. just to amplify the effect here and we will throw them up in the air a little bit and then after we initiate the launch we will delay about a half second And then see what happens. <laughs> Interesting. Still falls to the world. Um, let's look at the... Um, we want the collision preset. It's set to that. What happens if we just set it to Ragdoll? Still fall through the damn world. Block all dynamic. This has nothing to do with the rest of the video, by the way. Um, again, just screwing around. It's block all dynamic, but interesting that it just falls through the freaking world. Blah! Boom. Okay. So we'll try it without the launch character. And just move this back. Because without the um, the ability for him to have collision still. Big. 
Not sure why he's getting flung all over the place here, but whatever. All right, so getting into the things here. First thing I want to do is I'm going to create a pain pad and a um, well, like a first aid kit. And we can close that. Maybe we don't need them anymore. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. All right. So the first one is going to be the pain pad, which is just going to be a not a pawn, dumbass. Blueprint class, actor, pain pad, and all we need is a cube. Usual. You have seen this a hundred times. And then we need a box collision. Of which we're going to 1.5 by 1.5 by 0.5. Pain pad is simply just that. It's just going to cause us damage. And let's go ahead and dump all this stuff. On component begin overlap. Character. So it doesn't matter who steps on it. And uh, apply damage. Damaged actor is the other actor. Base damage is going to be 25, seems fine. And compost and save. And if we go in here, we see we have a health bar. We step over it and it didn't do anything because our player doesn't have a way of taking damage. So we need to find a clear space, event any damage, and all we're going to do is grab our health we want to get and set. And we are going to subtract the damage from our health and set our health to that. Then we'll come back in here and we'll do custom event, death, and if we need to, we can replicate this later, but this is just for getting it there. And we'll grab from here, and we want to find out if our health is less than or equal to zero. Run a branch. And if it is true, then death. We do whatever this says. Now if we come in here, running around, and poof, we take damage. Step on it again, we take damage. Now we're dead. And we need to, first off, ensure that we set our health to zero. So that it doesn't go below zero, we want it to just stay there. And then from there we can actually We'll see what happens if we do the um, mesh as block all dynamic. And we want to then Set to simulate physics. We want it to be true. All right. So now, when we reach zero, we 
little excessive, but it's something that can be tweaked later on. But it actually just kills you there with a full ragdoll. Um, I don't like usually using um, ragdoll for for death, but whatever. Now, for a respawn system, we want to on. Well, let's go ahead and just create a custom event. Custom set spawn point because it's something we want to be able to call whenever. And then we'll add a new variable and we'll call this spawn location and we'll change that to a vector. So at this, we're just going to set this variable. But we need some way of getting that, so we'll just do get actor location and boom. That's just all it's going to do is whenever we call this custom event, it's going to set our current location to our spawn point. And I can actually come in here and on begin play I can just go ahead and what did I actually call it? I could set spawn point. So we just run that. So on begin play, we're setting our initial spawn point. And then if later on you create a checkpoint that saves your player's location, you can just run that custom event and it will save this as your current spawn point. So whenever you do it, and just for giggles, I'm going to go ahead and print text. And we're just going to say spawn point set. And we'll let that stay up for five seconds. You don't have to put that in there. This is just kind of a we know that it just happened kind of notification. You can see spawn point set. So if I actually put in a checkpoint, came over here, as soon as I cleared it, it would actually run that. So going into the ragdoll, um, you don't want the, your player to be able to do any kind of movement whatsoever. I mean, we're, we're moving all around, and yeah. Our body's not. So we want to set our movement mode to none so that we can't move around for sure. So we'll come over here and All right, so we can't move, but technically speaking, our capsule component, let's turn it on so we can see what's actually happening here. Um, uncheck hidden in game. So we can see our capsule collision. And as we proceed to kill ourselves, our capsule is still there. It has not moved. Our body is no longer inside there. So that's going to be a problem if we just tell it to come back there. So we need to, and I'm going to put in the next thing, which will be set actor location. We're going to end up teleporting our player. And we need to undo our physics. So we'll uncheck that. And then we'll re enable our movement. Now, probably going to end up coming back in with a delay here. And 
probably not a bad idea. So let's actually do that. Because sometimes, well, Unreal Engine 4 is going to be Unreal Engine 4. And we know that shit happens. We're going to give it a just normal half second delay. And let's see what happens now. Still see. Uh, I probably should up the damage a little bit. Boom. But our capsule collision is here. And we can still move. And when you look at our character. It's doing everything correctly, but our capsule collision and our body have not recombined. So just doing it that way is not going to work. So I'm actually going to delete that, setting the actor location, because we are not back together again with our body. But what happens if we just do that without teleporting? I should probably go ahead and Again, we walked away from our, our capsule collision. So, for now, we know we need to have that in here, but let's go ahead and figure out what we need to do here. Alright, so we set our movement mode to none, and we got our spawn location, but for some reason, it doesn't let us put everything all back together again. Back, well, let's go ahead and just 75. We'll step on it and then we'll jump one time and it'll kill us. Boom. So we need to reunite our capsule with our, our body. So if we set our world location of our mesh, how's that going to affect the rest of our body? We did teleport. So again, boom. Now our body is over there and our capsule collision isn't there. So we have to move everything. And no, let's head actor. Hey, what it defaults to rotation. And you should be using a rotation. That way you can face your character where you need it to go. But if we do this and that what's going to happen we're still not together but you know what and this is all fun I will get back to this here in just a moment um for the ragdoll stuff, it's good and bad. I, I like it. But for now, let's just go ahead and just do our normal, we've died, let's do this. So without the ragdoll, without separating our body from our, our capsule collision, which is kind of an oddball thing, um, let's go ahead and, and we should probably rematerialize and put ourselves back together again and then teleport. But yeah, let's just move on with the, the full death sequence here. And once we've confirmed that we're, we're at zero on our health, we need to set our actor location to our spawn location as a teleport. But we need to also ensure that we have 
get our character. Always need to be doing this. Set move mode to none. Movement mode to none. Enunciation. Words. And then we can come back in and we'll be do redoing it later. So I always like to have a delay. But we don't necessarily need it. Um, we set our actor location and then we can go ahead and resume movement. And we also need to set our health back. Too full. So this is going to just throw us back to where we started from. So we hit it, we die, and now we're back over here. Putting a delay in, doing a death animation is my preference, um, but you can set your ragdoll, your character collapses, and then after a short delay, everything moves back to the spawn location um, and rematerializes and you're, you're ready to go. So, that. Next thing I want to add in here is a basic first aid pickup and blueprint, actor, um, med, kit, and I don't have anything fancy model wise in here, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna put in a sphere, and why not? We'll make it red. And we'll scale it down. And then we need a sphere collision. That's good enough. I'm actually going to no collision on this. Because if our player doesn't need it, we want them to just walk right through it. So, again, on component begin overlap, we're going to check here with our player, because that's who we're doing. We don't want bots being able to pick up health. But, sort of our player, we're going to get health. We need to check to see if our health is less than 100. You could set it to whatever, but we want to make sure that they're, they're, they have at least some damage to heal. And then if they do have some damage to heal, we're going to go ahead and apply the amount of health we want. Um, and here's a, a nice little thing you can do for putting it into your map, and that is heal mount and we're gonna make this a float and we're gonna click on the eyeball here and then we are going to set health get health and get heal amount now, the heal amount, let's go ahead and set it to 25. So if we are able to use our health kit, we're going to set our health to our health plus the heal amount. So that's how we're going to handle our healing on that. Now, a couple things that we need to figure out now. Do we want this to go away? Do we want this to come back? Or do we want to figure it out whenever we get it in the map? So at this point, we need to run a branch. And we're going to do can. Respawn XP 
expose that and we need to make sure that these are in um, stats. We'll just give it an actual place for them to go to. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. And can respawn needs to be a boolean. So we'll get that. Now, if we can respawn, we're going to do this sequence. If we cannot, then we just want to destroy actor. We want to get rid of it. But if we can respawn, we are going to need to do a couple things here. We're going to get a reference to our sphere and our sphere collision, poorly named I might add, and we are going to set visibility to false, and we are going to set collision enabled and leave it to no collision. And we're going to create one more variable. Delay or respawn delay. And I'm going to make this into an integer and expose that so we can edit it and put that back in stats. And sadly, we need to change that to a float um, because a religion respawn delay and we're going to make this at three as a default and then we're going to grab those and we're going to set visibility to true and collision enabled. Now whenever I take this, place it into the map and we're just gonna come on this wait. Move this up and I'm gonna control C, control V so I have a second one in here. And now with these in here, medkit one does not respawn. See, stats is now going to show up here as a name, whatever we put up for our name. We're going to heal for 25. It cannot respawn because I didn't check that. And re uh, respawn delay is 3 if it was able to respawn. So I'm going to take this one, and heal amount is 50. And it can respawn. And 3 second delay, let's make it a 5 second delay. So we can change the stats of it while it's in the map. And let's go ahead and test it out. So there, we've done damage, we can come over here, and we healed ourselves. That one will not respawn, grab that one, and it should come back in five seconds, and there we go. So, now, we're good, and it will respawn, I can heal myself back up to full, and you can see, I'm full health, I don't need it anymore, but what happens if I walk over it? Nothing. So it won't give me anything, it won't destroy itself, and it'll stay there. But if I need it, I can always use it. So, cool, cool. Um, if you had a shape on there that you could see do something, um, come back in here, shape, let's change it to a cube. And, well, Sphere collision is going to be a little bit small, so I'm just going to make it bigger. A box collision would probably be better for that. Um, so now if we look at it in, in game here, so you've got a nice cool shape for it, or a med kit, or something, and you want to add some movement to it. So we just had a rotating movement. And you can adjust the speed, the amount that it rotates. That's a little bit fast, maybe. So we can come back in here, change the rotation rate to 80 instead of 180. We'll go back in here and 
butamus. And again, if we need it, we can use it. That one will not come back. This one will. Okay, we don't need it, so we can't take it anymore. So, questions, questions, questions. Um, I don't have a def animation in here. I've got generic animations uh, pack, which is good. Um, I think it's nice that it has a, a couple of throw animations. So if we want to add that to our character to have them actually throwing something. We got a couple of those. Well, the reason why the first one does not come back is because whenever I set it up in the blueprint, um, I set up a variable saying can respawn and I expose that by clicking on this so you can see the eyeball and added a respawn delay. So what happens now is once it does its first part, which is does our healing, we get to this point and I ran a branch node saying can it respawn using this variable here. And then if it can respawn, then we're going to make it invisible. We're going to turn off collision of the box collision. We're going to set our respawn delay plugged into our delay there. And the respawn delay is just a float that we expose so we can edit that. And after the end of that delay, it will reappear. But if we set can respawn to no, which is the default, then it just destroys the actor. It goes away for good. So now when we actually have it in the map, we can come over here. This is the one that does not come back. And that's because here, I did not check this box for can respawn. So if I put a fresh one in here and put it wherever I want, I can check can respawn, yes. I want it to come back in one second. And I want it to do 100 um, for that. And then that's a full heal. So I come over here, bam, I just took 75 damage, pam, and it came back. That way you can have it to where when you're putting it into the map, if you decide, hey, I want it to come back, or no, I don't want it to come back, then you can do that. Another little fun trick here is um, on Event Begin Play, let's, let's just do something a little bit different here. Since we have this cube, it's going to have four normal sides that we'll see rotating. Let's add another component in here of a text render. And let's move it to where it's on here. But first thing I want to do is change the horizontal alignment to center. And we're probably going to have to play with it because of snapping. Let's do... 26. It's really close. Let's try 25.1. So it's just barely there. And we'll slow it down a little bit. That's fine. Um, and the text here, let's actually bind this text to where it says the amount that it's actually going to heal. So for the text, um, how are we going to do that? Hmm. Well, let's go in here and on Event Begin Play, which is odd as you can't do it the way you would normally do it in a widget. So we're going to get a reference to this and get a reference to our heal amount and we are going to set text we need this float amount to actually be 
usable as text. So we can just drag across to here and then automatically convert it into text. So on event begin play, it should tell us how much we're going to get healing from that particular med kit. Now you could have it above it, rotating in the air. Um, I decided to just put it right there. You can see the one on the left is going to give us 100 health. The one in the middle is going to give us 25. The one on the right is going to give us 50. And if you want to make sure that it's on all sides, then you can control C, control V, and rotate at 90. We'll change this to 0. You need to be 0 and 25.1, I think is what we said on the other one. And then we'll do it again. We're doing it 90. And you suck, so that's that. And negative 25.1. And then we can do one more. Add one more, thank you. And we'll rotate that 180. And we'll just need the negative, and then I'll put it right there. So now on event begin play, when we go in there, we've got this visual representation of how much it's actually going to be there. Um, but you notice it says text still on the other ones. So all we got to do is go back in here and text render. Well, we need to go one, two, and three. So let's just move this out of the way for now. And we can grab text render one, two, and three and connect them all in to there so now we can see what what each one of them is going to do for our healing now if this was like a plus symbol for universal for first aid or healing or whatever you could put this number above it you could put it on it you could put it wherever you want um, I've also done like with uh, Cinti assets of having the, uh, the uh, med kit and actually putting the number above it and so you can see it. So we know that this one is going to give us 25, this one's going to give us 50, but you notice the numbers didn't go away. So that just gives us one more thing that we got to do. And I'm just going to do this, copy all those. And we just need to add in on the set visibility. We can just pop those in here and plug them all into that because we already have a set visibility node and we're turning off visibility of something already here. So we can just plug them all into there and when we or setting our visibility back on, we can come back over here and just connect those in. So now all of our numbers will go away. Whenever we use that 50, we no longer have shadows anymore, we no longer have numbers floating in the air, and let's go ahead and harm ourselves again, and poof. And let's go ahead and grab this one. That one will come back first. So now you can actually set the healing amount, whether it can respawn or not, and the delay on how long it takes for it to come back. To me, I like that for being able to set up um, 
um, health kits and ammo kits and things like that inside our, our level because if you decide that you want one that's going to keep coming back you can just click a box and it'll come back and you can set how long it takes for it to come back well if it's in a common location maybe I want it to come back um, really slow but if it's in a hard to reach location that you know you have to jump to get it maybe and you can't just it's not a repeatable quick location to go to then go about it that way so we can get rid of those and that save our map I'm all about fun things on trying to do things in games now that everybody wants to do a battle royale everybody wants to do a shooter and this and that and everything else but it's just how many times do we need the same thing repeated over and over and over and over and over and over you know we don't need the same old thing yeah maybe you want to make the next greatest coolest game but does it have to be murdering folks or whatever make a fun game make something that's entertaining when's the last time you were playing a game and you just laugh so hard you're afraid you're gonna crap yourself that's the kind of games that you really I want more people out there doing instead of I want to make a battle royale but with turtles yeah I mean that's cool I mean everybody has their, their goal of what they want to do um, but make it different make it to where oh I've never seen that before you know add a coolness factor or a fun factor or you know something of that nature and for God's sakes don't forget to add Easter eggs something hidden on your map somewhere that if a player is just walking around their, your, your map doing your thing and they, they come across it like oh my god why did they put that in here that kind of stuff yeah there's, there's just too many battle royale games out there it's done you know there's no point in putting another one out there so let's make something that's just absolutely does nothing but something stupid um, that could be funny um, we got a med kit pain pad that kind of stuff let's do a blueprint actor and we'll just do a chance pad you don't know what's gonna happen you know you could teleport to a fun location or you could get a supercharged boost to your health or you could have it do whatever you want it to do but we're just gonna go ahead and add a cube and same thing we're just gonna do point one so it's small and let's go ahead another component of a box collision just give it a name this time and we'll do 1.5 by 1.5 by 0.5 so just typical step on pad it does something okay and get rid of everything in here and on component begin overlap what's gonna happen when we step on this pad and we're just gonna do it for our player character because we don't have any bots roaming around right now so what's gonna happen we want something to happen and now whatever we put on here can happen so first thing let's do a variable it's just you chance I'm gonna make this into an integer and we're going to do random integer in range for right now we're gonna do two so we'll do zero and one so it's it's coin flip we're going to do this or we're going to do that so we'll come off from here and hit equal twice and we'll just copy and paste zero and one 
so we'll run a branch. If it is equal to zero, then we do this. If it is not, no. We're going to do this. So, this is our coin flip. If it's zero, we're going to do this. If it is one, we're going to do this. And then, let's just do a couple different things here. To start off with, we'll do something simple. Launch. Jeez. Grab from here. Launch character. So if it's zero, we're going to throw ourselves up in the air. If it is one, we're going to set our health to ten. That's great. Let's do fifty. So we got a 50-50 shot of being half dead or thrown up in the air. You can do any combination of things with this you want. Um, so I'm just going to throw this into the map and hit play. Hey, look, there's a pad. Boop, I got thrown in the air. Cool. Run over it again. And instead of set health, let's just do, um, since we have a normal health set up here, uh, apply damage and we want to come from our other actor so we know that our damaged actor is going to be the one that stepped on it so if it is zero we're going to get thrown in the air if not we're going to come down here and if it is one then even though there's that. I mean, if it is one, it should do that. With only two options, there's really no need for adding a zero and a one. So, got thrown, got thrown, and it did not change our health. Why it no change our health? I mean, technically, we could do that, and so if it is not, there we go. It was confusing itself because of that. So we can either get thrown up in the air or we can get murdered. So you can have any number of combination of things, like, oh, it just killed us, so we'll respond. Um, it's a very, very simple thing. Um, you could add particle effects and sounds naturally to that. Um, you could do other things like uh, setting up a side-scrolling platformer or whatever. Um, I've actually added in cannons, where one cannon is aimed towards something that needs to get knocked over or whatever, or a wall that needs to get destroyed, and you have to step on it or activate it however and be able to trigger that to happen. Um, a launch character is just one of the, the little things. It's like you change it to 500, so we're not throwing it as far. So we got damaged, and we got damaged. So a coin flip. Um, you could have it say, okay, if it's, you know, flipping coin, if it's zero, then do this. If not, do that. Um, technically, also, with this, you can... Um, let's see here. Yeah, run a sequence. So put your different options off of right there. So it's going to ask, is it 0 or 1? 
if it's zero, do this. If it is one, and we'll just run a branch in here off of our sequence node. And if it's true, then we're going to do we're going to do that. So every time you add another number in here, so if you change it from 0 to, to 2, that would be three options, 0, 1, 2. If you're like me and um, numbers are hard, it's easier. It's either going to be a 1 or a 2. Then just change this to a 1, 2. Easier to keep up with than that. Oh, 0 is actually 1. 1 is actually 2. No. I, I like to go this route because I don't like to think. Thinking's hard. So if you do it that way, what happens? We got both. We don't want both. Is it equal to one or two? Why did it do both? So technically, you should be able to run it from here to here and it work. And I've not had that fail before. Move. Thank you. Is it equal to 1? If so, do this. If false, is it equal to 2? Yes, then do that. That's the way it should be. I've never had that fail before. And just like Unreal Engine 4, See, okay, we took damage. That time we got thrown. We got thrown. And we took damage. Okay, so it's working the way it's supposed to be. Come up with different weird things you can do. Um, I also like the... Another quick thing here. Actor. Uh, let's go with... Uh, checkpoint. And same basic thing here. We need to add a component. We don't need to add a lot of physical stuff here. We could just set it as a um, box collision. And so that we can see it, we'll uncheck hidden in game. And I'm going to go ahead and size it up to 3 by 3 by 3. I think it should be 90. It's 30 per one. So 30, 60, 90. No problem. And then we come back in here and delete all that. Our box collision on component begin overlap. We're going to go from other actor, get a reference to our player character. And we want to set spawn location or since what we did is we created that custom event we can set spawn point and now what that's going to do is it's going to remember that whenever it runs that custom event and let's go ahead and throw our pain pad back in here well we don't need it because we got that it's going to cause damage throw a checkpoint in and I'm going to put this at Zero, 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 and then I'm going to grab another one, and I'm going to fucking hate you on Real Engine 4, and I'm going to put it right here, doesn't matter where we put them, we can see that checkpoint, our spawn point was set from when we spawned in, walk through this, spawn point was set again because we went through that checkpoint, and just so we know, if I die, right now, this is my spawn point. So, we died, respawned here, and if I go over here, boom, spawn point set. And let's try to kill ourselves. Oh, damn it, Unreal Engine 4, you suck sometimes. respond right there. 
But if we come back over here, we made it to another checkpoint. Yay, spawn point is set there. And to make this easier, I'm just going to get a kill command. We have the G key, we die. Simple as that. Alright, so this is our spawn point. This is where we started. So if I die, boom, we go back to here. If I clear this checkpoint and then die because we went around here, we did something stupid, and boom, we respawned here. We made it to our next checkpoint and we died. Boop, it brings us back to here again. And there was much rejoicing. Um, if you're not setting up something where you need to respawn like that, then, well, just don't respawn. Um, you can set up after effects of, okay, if it's a, as much as I hate on a battle royale, where when you're out, you're out. You can set up uh, your player to go into, um, let's actually just, so we have something more noticeable in death instead of just a quick teleport. Um, so set our spawn point, that's all we're doing. Is we're getting our current location and we're setting it as our spawn point. Um, set our actual location, set our movement mode. Before we set our movement mode back to walking again, let's run a delay. Two seconds. So we can't move yet until that two seconds is up. You could put whatever you want in for your death sequence. But this is our spawn point. So if we die, we come back to there. And poof, our health is back full. We can move again. We made it to a new checkpoint. We get notified of it. We get killed. Health goes away and then comes back. Boom, we're dead. And we're back. So now we just change our checkpoint again because we completed something. We died, it brings us back to here, and we can move again. If you want, you can set it up to where basically your character's body is gone, and you're able to float around basically as a camera and be spectator mode. If you want to see that later on, you can do that. It's not that hard to do. Um, having sound effects and having different things in here is a good thing. All right, I no longer want to kill myself every time I hit G. Um, I press G. We're going to stop our movement. And we're going to go to our animation generic. Pick one, create as a montage. That's delightful. And we're going to play a montage. And then when we're completed, uncompleted we go here and we set our movement mode back to walking we want to ensure that we're not able to walk while we're we're doing our animation so I can't move around but when I'm done now I can move back around again I hit it it stops us we fart we have our hand and now we can go back and keep doing what we want to do But why is it whenever I, I do that, I, and all you have to do is, uh, well, let's do uh, let's just pick one. Triumph. We'll right click on this and create animation montage. Hit enter. We're done. Go back into our character. We're doing this. We stop us. We play this animation. We're going to do Triumph. 
and then when we're done we want to do that so how come whenever I put in a, an animation montage um, yay we're the wiener yay rejoice how come whenever I do that I, I press the button I set it up just like you showed but why is it that I'm not able to do a frickin thing my montage won't play go to your animation blueprint and this was our showing our goods talking to a vendor that was this is not actually the player this is actually a vendor this was from another video but when you look at your animation graph you notice I've added this in drag from your result from your output pose in your 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 base level and just type in slot and there you go slot default slot why I don't know this is necessary but you're gonna run that and between your whatever you're doing and your output pose that needs to be in there and your montages will work at that point and as I always say there was much rejoicing yay now just like we did with that the pad there we could have it do different we can set it up to do a random emotes or what have you and to create the animation montage for that basically you just take your animation now it is a multiple things in one animation that you want to accomplish and you want to join them together to make one montage for fuck's sake Zach enough with the goddamn here's and everyone's not everybody wants to be part of your everyone's um, if you don't already have this animation pack and you're setting up things for um, just random AI that are standing in and talking or what have you there are a couple animation packs that I definitely recommend of course animation starter pack is free it's gonna handle your weapon stuff I am gonna dig back into the AI enemies assault soldier that was pretty good um, quick way to create a game where you've got bad guys to shoot at and things going on um, battle royale template was pretty good if you're into that kind of thing um, it's great it's, it is a really good asset pack and it's worth the money but I'm not into those um, generic animations Let's see dynamic locomotion I, I stay away from most of those because they're too much involved in adding to your your player blueprint and I try to keep yeah, minimal stuff uh, generic anim pack and it's good all the way up through 424 for right now um, it was available free in the marketplace I don't know if it is still or how much it is or what have you um, it's worth getting it is very worth getting because it does have a few good things in it um, let's go back to the library another really 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 good um, animation pack that you is a simple must-have when you're putting passive NPCs into your scene is and I'm gonna add it into this project here for a reason ah, damn this paragon bullshit well the Phoenix anim pack 3 if you didn't get that one you're screwed now that was free for the month um, it is so worth having that um, I'm thinking about buying the rest of his stuff so I'm gonna add that one in, into that project the other one is pedestrians animation pack really 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 good so I'm gonna go ahead and add that one in here as well both of those, you know, it, this guy here, I'm not sponsored by anybody, much less 
um, this guy. Um, really good animations, and this is the one that actually had um, swimming animations in it. But if you don't know what you can find until you actually search, and again, really quickly, go to the marketplace and search for animations, we'll say, and sort by price, low to high. That's free. Right now, this is still free for the month. Phoenix Fan Impact 3. Get it. Don't even think about it. Just go ahead and get it. Be done with it. Mobility Starter. Not bad. I haven't looked at it all the way yet, but MoCap usually does pretty good stuff. Um, zombie Starter Pack. Not bad if you're doing zombie stuff. It's pretty good, actually, if you're doing those. Um, Rifle Starter is actually better than the Animation Starter Pack. Um, I have previewed some of the stuff, but not all of it. But always, always, always be looking in this right here. Whether it's animations or um, characters. If you do characters, it's nice, huskies. Price low to high. If you're not surfing the free stuff, something wrong with you. These actually look pretty cool. I don't have really a need for them now. But if you need monsters like dragons for um, a Sinti project, you know, or a lower poly project, those are great. Um, I still need to look at these guys. They look great here, but I just haven't looked at it. Or the animal pack. Prototype characters. Even though you got the UE4 mannequin, still, if you need another free character, good to go. These two, meh. They look okay, but they don't retarget all that great. Um, the Mixamo, I'm... They're right. Um, that actually looks pretty interesting. Um, cartoon style zombies. I like cartoon style and that kind of stuff. You know, realistic stuff is, is nice, but the more realistic you start making your game, the more realistic people are going to expect your game. So, let's get back into this. Um, when you add these animation packs, the first thing you really got to do is make sure that your character, your UE4 mannequin, which needs to stay in your project, make sure that it is set to humanoid rig. It is a mandatory thing. I'm going to close our player for right now. And then when you go into like generic NPC and impact, I've already deleted this once. I don't know why it's still here, but we'll fix that here in a moment. Phoenix and impact 3. So we'll go here, we'll go to our character folder, our mesh, go into our UE4 mannequin skeleton and there select your humanoid rig and save and then go to the animations this one's not not very many but if for no other reason to get it the swimming animations are there and well worth having for that so select all of them and all I did was I left clicked on the first one and then I shift left click on the last one I'm going to right click, retarget, duplicate, retarget. Now figure out which UE4 mannequin skeleton is the correct one. Just by mousing over it I can see that this is the one that I want. So based on the, the path. And I don't like the fact that they use the word anim in front of everything. So I'm going to type in the word anim right here. And I'm not going to put anything there. Then I'm going to change the folder so that it goes into my character animations and since I don't have a folder yet I should probably create one but I'm just going to tell it to go right to my generic animation folder hit OK and retarget and that is done we can close that folder and look at our new animation generic and now we have a bunch more animations to work with so I'm just going to hit save all save selected and I'm going to go ahead and do the pedestrian animation pack. Again, if you have not seen the pedestrian animation pack and you're looking for just generic characters to put into your, your generic animations to put into your, your map, it's already set to humanoid. That's good. 
216 animations in this pack. So I'm going to left click on the first one, shift left click on the last one, and then right click. Retarget, select the correct mannequin, change our folder, assets, no, nope. um, character, animations, generic, OK, and retarget. Takes a little longer because there's a whole lot more animations here. And once we get done, We'll go ahead and, and make sure we save all. We'll take a peek at one of the animations really quickly. Then I'm going to show you an important step that will save you some time. All right, so we're done here. We look at our, well, let's close that folder down. Close Manny, look at our folder. We now have 307 animations we can work with, not including our regular third person animations or if we had any weapons animations in, or anything like that. You can never have too many animations. As long as they're good animations. So, um, the one that I'm actually going to use in this is going to be, well, I'm just going to open it up and then we're going to close it back up and then I'll show you the important part here. and. push-ups. We got start, idle, and end. We start, we drop down. Idle is actually doing push-ups. And end, we actually stand back up again. So I'm going to combine all three of them into one montage. But the next thing I'm going to do is make sure I do save all, and I do that. Why the hell did you just close the project down? Doesn't make any sense. Why the, why the hell would you do that? because I'm going to go to my project and inside my content folder I no longer need the generic NPC and impact or pedestrian animation or Phoenix. I've already retargeted them and they're in the correct folders I need them to go to. I'm deleting them outside of the project because, oh my god, if you do it while you're inside the project and you got everything running, when you're talking about 300 plus animations or, or maps or anything else that it might be in those folders, it is going to take probably 10 minutes to frickin' do its thing. And I don't feel like waiting 10 minutes. All right, so now let's go back to our blank level. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my thingies. And blank starter map. So we're going to go back to our animations, and I'm going to create the push-up sequence. Now, I use these in one of my projects for... Um, emotes. Like if I want my character to be able to do a dance or um, wave or what have you, then I set these up as emotes that the player can do whenever they want to do it. Kind of a, a social flexing sort of thing. So let's go, where's my push up? Push up, push up, push up, up. Yeah, I could actually just use this stupid ass search box. It works great. But that would be simple and easy and faster. Alright, so I am going to start with start and I'm going to create an a montage and I'm going to call this my push up underscore montage. You could just do underscore M or whatever the hell you want to do. Um, so I'm going to open it up. He starts doing his his deal. He drops down but I want him to now go into the idle animation. So I'm going to grab this and just drop it there. 
So he drops down and does that. But I want him to do more than just one push up and then get back up. So I'm going to grab another one and just throw it in here. You see how it's dropping back and forth and back and forth? That's good. As soon as he ends one, he goes right into the other. Drops down, does one, two. We want to add one more, so he does three push-ups. And then we want the end. So now he drops down, he'll do three push-ups. And he'll get back up. Beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. That's good. Let's go back into our player character. And since we're using the G key to do whatever, do push up montage now when we hit G. Go in here, drops down. You'll do three push ups and you'll get back up. We're walking, but when we hit our thing, it stops us. I'm holding down the forward key, by the way. So, it'll just start walking again as soon as he gets done. So, montages are great for things that are non-interruptible like this. Because when you start doing it, he's going to be doing it. I can't do anything else while I'm doing these. Um... But that's fine. Where it comes in really tricky is when you're trying to set up multiple montages. If you drag off from here, you can promote to variable, and we'll call this our montage to play. Now, if we hit compost and save, we look at our montage to play, it's already that push-up. The problem you run into is with multiplayer replication and a list of 50 different things you can potentially be doing, is you have to make sure that you think about the problem and just with anything in general when you're, you're creating your game elements, do one thing at a time. Don't try to, I want to be able to run and do this and this and no, 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 run. If you want your character to run, what was the first thing you want him to do is run. Well, get your character to run, all right? Um, if you want your character to then drop down and do push-ups, then, uh, well, think about it. Do you want your character running while they're doing the push-ups? No, you want them to stop. So you make them stop. Then you make them do your push-ups. What happens when you're done? You get up and you keep going. Well, there's no sound. Well, whenever I do this, uh, there's no sound. Well, you could technically go into your animation and add notifies. So, let's just pause it. Now, if this were me, it would be loud clicking noises, moaning, and crying you know, whenever coming to actually doing exercising. Um, and you would go down for the first push-up, and you would probably end up taking a nap. So that's how I would be doing these push-ups. Yeah, but that's just me. So, you know, right here, let's... Um, in the individual animation, is a good spot to actually put these uh, cues in. But... A new... Like a duplicate slot, new slot... Um, in the individual animation for when you get to this point in the animation you want your knees to pop and then when you get down here grunt, groan, cry, piss, complain and then uh, you, you break down by right clicking in there and, and adding the individual animation notifies so push up start I'll just go into it Pause it. About right here is whenever I would start hurting. And it would start getting uncomfortable. About right here is where you'd hear bones cracking. And then here's where you say, oh shit. And then by the time I get to right here, I'm like, uh, uh, 
making all kind of weird noises. Um, so just grab a spot in here. Um, start doing this, and you hear the bones creak. And you right click, you add notify, new notify, or just play a sound. And on there, there's a way of doing it, and I don't remember how. Um, I will refresh my brain, but you can actually put that directly in the animation and here, so it no matter what, it's playing. I don't remember how to do it. So I'm just going to remove that. Even though I didn't change any damn thing, I undid everything, it still wants me to save it. But you can set those, and you can call them either in the, um, the animation blueprint. Um, I can't remember the actual name of the node, but um, in the animation blueprint... No, we just opened the damn thing. In the event graph, you can actually... Um, you can actually call the animation notify event in here and then from that just be able to tell it to do a specific task like play a sound or what have you. Alright. You guys quit being talkative so. Um, any questions on anything? As if you notice um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save everything here and then in my other project here, open project. And then this one. Whenever I'm setting up those animations, I did not run them as animation montages. I'm not sure why I didn't. Um, probably should. But the problem that I ran into was when selecting that list of things and I'm just going to go to the build map so that I don't have to wait for everything to... Oh, forgot. We have a zombie here. Once they spawn in, they spawn in threes, and then they start walking towards a set waypoint unless they see somebody, and then they come towards them, and then they're going to attack, and eh, whatever. So, you see I've got the waypoints and the zombie spawner. Gonna get rid of those, so I don't have to worry about them. All right. So with our character, we open up our phone, and you know, before we open our phone, we have a dance. We can do our, our default dance is gonna be this, and if I want to change that default dance, I can open my phone and mm, let's churn butter. Let's change it. Close our phone, and now we got a different dance. No problem. Replication is not a big deal. But when you have a long list of things that you're actually changing, um, I'll go back and fix it again later where you don't have, you have to, before you didn't have to hit the change dance button. I, I don't know why I've got it in there. I don't know what my, my train of thought was, but I added it in. So if you want to change your dance while you're dancing, um, let's work. But see, if I hit, we're still doing the old dance. Start dancing, stop dancing, our phone's active. But if we hit change dance, and hit it twice, it'll change it. We can actually close our phone. And yeah, I'll fix the animation so you're not hovering a few inches off the ground. Um, Oh, by the way, still haven't finished doing the arena for this yet. Just pure goof off. Like I said, trying to come up with things to be goofy. Um, yes, I'm going to save the map. And unfortunately, to, instead of loading this, I could have just done it in the other map, in this map. Um, let's take a second to load this map up. And then we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to get out of here. Um, I've been playing uh, The Division 2, and I'm probably going to go back and replay one of the missions 
on a stream tonight. And it's a prime example of what I mean of just trying to have some fun. You know, even in a game like The Division 2, where it's all about killing and shooting and grenades and explosives and fire and murder and mayhem and discontent and all that, um, there's one map in, in particular, Coney Island, the haunted house area of the map. You start at the arcade and you go through into the fun house and that kind of stuff. Not perfect, but it's brilliant. Nice use of different elements to actually increase the fun. Good God, take forever, why don't you? Instead of just dropping the NPC in here and, and going with it. Um, so we'll walk across town. So we still have our phone. Um, let's actually play in... New Pi. So, we've got our phone. Um, since I want to do a quick check, I'm the admin. So, when I'm the admin, I can actually go on duty as the FBI officer. And I can teleport into my jail cell and check on my prisoners. And when I'm done, um, I can teleport back and go off duty if I want to. Um, I have the ability to promote as the admin, I have the ability to promote players that I choose to become moderators and when they become moderators they wear the police officer uniform but the map shop with this long list of maps you can buy any of these um, maps uh, masks you can buy any of these in fact I'm going to what am I going to choose this time I want to be a panda we're going to be a panda. So you come over here and you look at this list of masks to work with. And then, there we go. And we're going to exit. Now I'm a panda. Yes, I know I can get rid of the hair and that kind of stuff. But that's really low on the food chain of things that i got going on. And if I want to go into here and take off my mask, no problem. I want to put it back on. Go back in here and put it back on. If I don't have a mask, hitting that on button won't do anything. I don't have any money and I haven't set up that button yet. I am the admin, so I have a special admin section right here by clicking here. If you're just a regular player, clicking right there all day long won't do anything. And yes, that is the correct time. BBG wireless, and that is the correct date. On my magic little cell phone, I can change the screen the background screen of my phone whenever I want to to whatever I want because it is a separate element from the rest of the phone um, so yeah that's that and to take a quick peek and then we'll get out of here for the player character and let's see here pool float Admin, dance, mask. All right. Cosmetic vendor widget. And I'm going to go back and redo the the actual widget system of how it knows which widget you're, you're needing for which NPC you're in front of. Uh, but I press E whenever I'm at the vendor, and it sets all my inputs and all that kind of stuff. To change my mask, it, I have to wear my owned mask, whatever one I own. So when I take it on and off, I'm getting the same one because it's being saved as a variable. Um, but whenever I change my mask, I can go from the panda to the luchador to the paper bag or whatever else. And switching back over to what my owned mask is, or I could set it up as if you could own multiple masks. And then you can go back in and update that list and, and one thing at a time. But having to change your own mask for the mask and uh, you know that's just a small portion of what had to go on and then when you look at the actual widget for that vendor but it's just a simple little thingy right here this right here each element that goes in there has to have a default name for the option going in 
And then when you go into the graph, okay, well, unclicked for your, your mask, get your mask. It is changing your owned mask to um, the mask to buy and wearing the mask. And, you know, I had to go through a bunch of little dumb shit in order to get all that spaghetti to work. But essentially, if what you selected in that drop down box is alien, then you're setting the mask to buy to be the alien, which is an actual list, which is a uh, part of my data, which is in a data folder, and assets, data, and this is the dance one, so all the different dances are right here. Same basic thing on the dances. Um, where the hell did I put that one? Why didn't I put it in the right location? mask list. So I had to put in the static mesh name for all of these, and since they're static meshes and not skeletal meshes, I had to make sure I disabled the collisions or else you'd be doing cartwheels and dumb shit. Um, so all of them are in here based on a name and associated um, static mesh. So again, if you selected alien, and this has to be exactly the same as it is here. So you have to copy this, and then paste it here, and then go to here, and then go to there. Now you could avoid doing all of this by just changing this variable to where you're setting it, oh, okay, this one's going to be this one, this one's going to be this one, and just changing this every single solitary time. I chose to just grab this, and copy, paste, copy, and just paste, 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 until I got all the way down here to the very end of the list. Just copied and pasted in these two, and then just dragging lines across. That's just how I chose to do it. And to show new Pi window, we know what the, uh, the host is, and this is the client, and this is the server. So server, walk around, do your thing. If you hit one to go on duty, no problem. We can see that the host is on duty. But if I hit G with the client, it just reports back saying normal player. Nav mesh needs to be rebuilt. I didn't change anything for the nav mesh to need to be rebuilt. So yeah, just normal player. And for the server, if they hit the key, it comes back saying admin. So we know our dude here, we go into our phone, we can click this all day long, nothing happens. Whereas the uh, server can go into his phone, on or off duty, and has access to that. And the mod maker gun, this system will change. And I'm going to close this, and if I target a player, in this case it's going to be the only other one here, which is a client. See, I left the line trace active just so you can see that I hit them. Now, whenever I hit one, I can actually go on duty, and you can see he's a police officer instead of a FBI agent. And for some stupid ass reason, the teleport's still not working to go to the, uh, the office. So, I've made some changes to it, I'm gonna have to keep changing that. But, if I open up my phone now, I can open this, and I can go off duty if I want to, or on duty. There'll be more options added in. I'm on duty. Three keys should teleport him, and it is not. If I hit it now with this guy, he's not on duty, it won't work. Um, three, and that's what's supposed to happen. I don't know why. I will keep looking at the other. Trying to figure out why home cheese here. You see, just kind of bleh. It doesn't work. For some reason, he's not teleporting to the, the jail cell, so go off duty, and we'll get on our thing. So yeah, that's that. Go off duty. 
and the dancing. Um, let's go ahead and change your dance to Gangnam Style, change dance. Do we have a mask? No, we don't, so nothing works. Close our phone. Doing the Gangnam Style dance. Go off this. If I do my dance, it's still doing the sexy dance. And if I go into my phone, change it. Let's twerk. Change dance. Close phone. And let's do a twerk. A lot of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on this Shiite to get it to um, represent correctly. I don't know why my nav mesh needs to be rebuilt. Whenever nothing changed on the freaking map. So yeah, dude just still dancing away. Um, so we're on the, uh, the server. We'll come over here. We'll grab the paper bag. Oh, shit. Uh, go in your phone. Um, no. Go in your phone. Turn off your mob maker gun. You can see that doesn't happen when you're actually playing. Just in the editor, for some reason, it gets confused about the uh, the player controller issue, so it changes back and forth. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, just have a seat. You wait right there. All right, stop dancing, you jackass. Go back into normal mode. Yep, he's sitting down. Let's go over here, get us a mask. We are going to be the luchador. Nope, we want to be the simple robber. See what I mean about the um, the confusion in the player controller? So we can see he's got a paper bag over his head, and. I go onto my phone, I can take off my mask. And it wakes. My phone. Take off my mask. Close the phone. And yes, the uh, the phone animations are replicated. And let's go over here. Have a seat. And that's it. All right. I hate when it opens up all these frickin' folders. All right. So um, one other thing, and I have not done the um, the fight back mechanism yet. I don't know what I'm going to use yet. I know I, I wanted to incorporate the infected mode, and I just stop for a little bit. I don't know if, if I have some kind of oh, maybe it's not correct if I do an infected zombie ass thing when so many people are dying in the infection and COVID-19 and yeah, whatever. Um, if I hit 5 um, I believe it was 5 I think it was five. <laughs> uh, well, my character blueprint. That's chair stuff that needs to be retouched. The jail thing, I gotta go back and redo. I don't have it replicated correctly. Five, yeah. Alright. Um, Five is something that can be done by the the server admin, the host of the game, can trigger uh, the zombie in infected spawns, and 
look down here in the distance and I gotta change their visibility range it's way too far um, the zombies spawn in if they reach you I still gotta set up an animation to it but they will cause damage there's a couple different spawns around the city and I'll probably add more spawns and make them either work or not work just a random switch um, they're gonna walk over to here there's a waypoint here holy crap there's more there um, and then they're gonna walk down the street to the end of this road where the last waypoint is if for some reason they lose sight of me and they can't track me then what they're set to do now is automatically say oh well we lost them and they'll go back to the original waypoint that we're heading to. You just have to change the, um, their view distance. They can see me from way too far away. Um, and there's no med kits in here yet. What I want to do is set it up to where... Damn, they're just all up on me. Set it up to where... Um, if they make it to the end then I'll probably set it up to where they go back towards their first initial spawn and just keep looping around town until there's none left. I'll put a counter up on the screen so we can know how many people are, are infected roaming through town and then people will be able to shoot at them or cure them or whatever and whenever there's none left, hey, we'll get a big thing pops up on the screen for everybody saying that um, all zombies have been cured or all infected have been cured or what have you. Since this is kind of a white bread town, we got to add some some fun here. So we'll, I'll probably add in an amusement park of some type and a, um, who knows, maybe a shooting range, um, a bar. Might add some miscellaneous traffic from time to time. Just little things here and there. But thank you guys for watching. Love y'all. And we'll see you around.